Right here, we have three cartridge bearings. Now, if you have an even slightly modern bike, you will have some of these in your bike somewhere. The front hub, the rear hub, the bottom bracket, and the headset are the four places that bearings are used in a bicycle. In fact, a bicycle really is only just four bearing arrangements connected by tubes to put it into perspective. So you'll have some of these in your bike somewhere. Now these are called cartridge bearings because they're a single unit, a single cartridge, which can be pressed into wherever they're required and then taken out when they're dead and then another new one pressed in. And because they're self-contained, you don't have to worry about losing balls or anything like that. They're just a, you know, plug and play as it were. The focus of this video is gonna be on hubs on how to replace the bearings in the hub, but I thought it'd be good to have a little look at the bearings first so you can see what's going on. So let, let's look at let's look at what makes a cartridge bearing then. Um, all these bearings are just variations on a the theme. Um, if you look at the parts, you've got the outer race here, the inner race here. This black bit is a rubber seal that sits on the system and stops a little bit of dirt getting inside it, but not all of dirt. And underneath this rubber seal, if we lift it off, you've got the actual balls which sit equidistant to each other on the races and allow the inner race to move independently of the outer race. So wherever this bearing is applied, the anything touching the outer surface can spin around without the inner surface moving. So in a hub, the axle would go through it and the hub shell would turn. So your wheel can go round. In the bottom bracket, the axle would go through, the crank axle would go through, then the hub shell would be here and your frame would come off of it, of course, which means that you can pedal. Um, in your headset, the steerer tube of your fork would go through and this part would be just sitting in the frame so you can steer your bike. Makes sense, right? So how does it actually work then? Well, the outer race has a groove along the inside, going around the inside. The inner race has a groove going around the inside and the balls sit in these two grooves and just spin round. It's that simple. So obviously, you know, a bearing is a human engineering creation which goes back thousands and thousands of years. Historians think that the first bearings were actually um, just trees that were cut down and all the uh, branches cut off them, laid in a line and then things can kind of sit on the trees and roll along pretty crazy so we've had bearings in our lives for ages but recently things have got a bit sort of snazzy with technology and materials so these three bearings do exactly the same job but they're all slightly different this one is a full steel bearing made by the ntn company of japan the outer race the inner race and the balls are all steel so each element is of an identical hardness this one here is called a hybrid ceramic bearing. So hybrid, meaning it's a, a mixture of more than one thing. The races are steel. So the outer race and the inner race are steel. Um, but the balls are made of this material called, but the balls are made of this material called silicon nitride, which people call ceramic for some reason. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, silicon nitride is a chemical compound of the elements silicon and nitrogen with the formula Si3N4. It's a white, high melting point solid that is relatively chemically inert. You know, just off the top of my head. Silicon nitride is harder than steel. Okay, so in this arrangement here, you've got a hard material, which is steel, and an even harder material, which is the balls. Now, any junior scientists out there, any junior um, physics experts will be able to <laughs> tell me the problem with that immediately. Um, if you have one material that's harder than the other, the softer material gets dug into by the harder material. So the silicon nitride balls are going to be digging in and causing damage to the steel races. So I think you know my opinion on hybrid ceramic bearings, but we'll get onto that later and in detail. Now this one, this black thing, is a full ceramic bearing. So the outer race, inner race, and the balls are all ceramic, silicon nitride, meaning this is a full harder version of that one. Now the thing with silicon nitride is you can make the balls rounder than steel, um, which means that theoretically they should spin faster and be more efficient. Now 
that's fantastic if you're in a completely clinical environment with no external factors affecting things like a velodrome maybe but even in a velodrome um, on the road this is more trouble than it's worth but again that's for another video um, the point of this video is to show you how to change these when they die now the thing with these bearings is the thing with all bearings is they do eventually die some faster than others i.e this one dies faster than everything this one dies next and then this one dies last so as we said at the start of the video you've got some of these in your bike now we're focusing on hubs in this video so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how to get these out of your hub and stick new ones in so as you notice there's no thread on here there's nothing to sort of screw it in there's nothing to grab hold of really so getting these things out and putting new ones in is a bit of a wrestle in some cases and involves less than elegant techniques now the general vibe is when you take a bearing out you're going to shag it right so you can be pretty hard with getting the bearing out pressing the bearing into the hub you need to be as, as delicate as possible which is convenient because getting the bearing out is a lot harder than getting a new one in generally. Now this video is a generic video, so we're not gonna focus on one particular hub. We're gonna show you some general principles about getting bearings out and general principles about putting them in. Starting from you know how to figure out where the bearings are, how to open the hubs up, how to get the bearings out, tools to use and so on. All right, we'll start with this one then, the Tune Hub. Um, you've seen this in previous videos. I've taken this apart in previous videos. Um, so, First of all then, in every hub like this, there is generally a bearing on this side of the free body, a bearing on this side of the free body, a bearing on this side of the hub shell, and a bearing on this side of the hub shell. So four bearings, generally speaking. So every hub that you see with a free body mechanism and a shell is probably gonna have four bearings. Now, the type of bearings they have in them will vary per hub, but it's very common to have this type of bearing, a cartridge bearing, here, 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 and here. Sometimes manufacturers and designers use a needle bearing here, which is something we'll look at later. But if you've got a hub like a Tune, an Extralight, a White Industries, a Chris King hub, it's gonna have something like this in here, in here, in here, and in here. Also the cheaper Chinese hubs, like ED Hub, Bitex, Novatec, Hubsmith, U Hub. Again, they all generally use four of these bearings of various different sort of sizes, but this, this format, one, two, three, four, okay? So the first thing you need to do is, is open the hub up. The best way to do this is to look at the manufacturer's website, look at a diagram and figure out where all the bearings are read the instruction manual and see how you're supposed to take it apart. I have got service videos for this tune hub. I've got a service video for the extra light as well. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the process of opening up a really cheap and nasty Taiwanese hub to show you how to apply these principles to something a bit different, which still has the same form factor. All right, so here we have a generic, cheap, heavy, nasty hub which I got from one of these fake bike companies who was trying to pass it off as their own. This hub died very quickly and the bearings were really rough. Um, the free body was creaking. The axle wasn't made perfectly straight. It was just, it's just rubbish. Now, I've already started to take this apart slightly, but I'm gonna show you the, the basic principles here. Looking at the hub then, there'll be a bearing here, a bearing here in the hub shell, a bearing in the free body here on this side and a bearing here. Okay, now what we need to do, and the general principle is, you need to get as much of the hardware off as possible to get into the bearings. So the first thing to do is get the end caps off. Now you need to investigate a little bit how your particular hub works, but generally they have an Allen key in the end. So you get that off, and then either that is a full axle or sometimes this is a screw-in thing. All right, so there we go, that's open then. So we can unscrew this end piece here. Now again, depending on your hub, um, the axle will either come all the way through or it'll be like this, a kind of flat-ended one that the end cap screws into it and acts as part of the axle. But we can see the bearing on this side. We can see the bearing on this side. Now obviously there's a bearing here and here as well. So the next step is to get the free body unit off so we can look at the bearing on the inside. 
depending on the hub again, um, it either slides off easily or you have to tap it out like in the tune video. Now either, you know, again, look at the online instruction manual or, or try and figure out the puzzle yourself, but you've got to get this off. Now, we'll look at the bearing arrangement in this later, but let's look at the hub shelf first. So we've got a bearing on this side and we've got a bearing here on this side. Looking at this free body then, we can see the bearing here, but we can't really see the one on this side. Now, some free bodies, you can press the bearing in from each side. So the bearing will be visible here and visible here. Some of them, you press the first bearing all the way through and it sits up against this, this shoulder here. Then a spacer goes in like we have here. If you can see that spacer moving around in there. And then the second bearing presses in on top. This one's slightly more awkward to work with, but I think it's good to see anyway. So the next step then is to start thinking about how we're gonna get these bearings out. Now, as I explained, um, it doesn't really matter if you, you know, bugger the bearings up as you're getting them out because you're gonna chuck them away and just press brand new ones in anyway. That's the beauty of the cartridge bearing system. What you are not gonna do though, is you're not gonna damage this red bit, okay? Because that needs to be perfect, which means that while you can go pretty crazy when you're getting these bearings out and, and use all sorts of brute force, you still need to be careful so that you don't knacker up the thing that it's sitting in. Um, that also goes for this hub shell. You can hit the bearings out pretty hard with a variety of you know, pokers and hammers and stuff, but you don't want to damage the axle and you don't want to damage the uh, hub shell itself. So how do you do it then? Well, these bearings sit directly in to the hub shell. So the way the manufacturer does it is they cut out a what's called a bearing seat, which is just they drill a shallow hole the same depth as the bearing, which is ever so slightly, ever so slightly smaller in diameter than the bearing. Now, when I say ever so slightly smaller, I mean like 0 0.002 millimeters. Now, this means that the bearing is held tightly in place. A high quality hub will have an even and very well machined bearing seat which means that the bearing itself is not being crushed, but it's also not too loose. A cheap hub, i.e. something like this, they generally machine the bearing seats to be a little bit too tight because, you know, it's better to have something sitting in a bit too tight than wobbling around and being too loose. And, you know, as a lot of people don't really ever think about their hubs, it's almost like a sort of ignored part of a bike. No one ever really twiddles the axles and thinks, hmm, that's a bit rough. They just ride their bike and it that doesn't really, doesn't really enter their imagination. However, when you start looking at these cheap hubs, um, you notice that the, the bearings are extremely tightly pressed in, very graunchy and gritty and rough when you turn the axles, um, and generally just pretty low quality. So how, how do we get it out then? Well. What you need to do is you need to identify which one you're gonna get out first. Now, are we gonna get out this one first or are we gonna get out this one first? Now, as you can see, I've already pressed this bearing out for the purpose of this video, um, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this one out first. Now, the reason for this is because this large bit of axle is sticking out here and there's nothing sticking out this side. Now, if we were gonna tap it through this way, that means that we'd have to press a lot of axle through this bearing in order to press this one out, okay? Which means that there's loads of friction involved. We could scratch up the axle and it's just a, it's a pain in the ass. If we tap it through this way, the axle only has to move a little bit through before this bearing comes out. If you've got this kind of axle with a screw in end axle piece, the easiest way to do it is to screw in the axle all the way until it stops, All right, there we go, and then wind it back a little bit, but not too much, so you've still got a lot of thread engaged, and then we'll just hit the end of this here, and the movement pushing it this way will force this bearing out. Now, as this bearing is almost all the way out anyway, I could just do this with my fingers, but what you'll need to do is you need to find something to cover this end with. Now, that could be a soft material, like a bit of wood, or plastic or something, or use a rubber mallet, then hit it directly and straight, punching this bearing out. Don't do it in one mega hard hit, do it in a few hits or a load of taps. That's 
better than going absolutely mental and whacking it as hard as you can straight away. Okay, now as I've pressed this out slightly already, I'm going to show you with my fingers what I mean. Okay, so that's the first step. Now the end cap has pushed in and seated all the way down, so we undo it slightly, just a little bit, to give us a little bit more to play with. Push it again. There we go. And you can see the bearings coming out. Again, unscrew it slightly, just a bit. You don't want to be at the end of the threads. And there we go, that's, that's the bearing out there. So then we take off this end axle piece, stick it over there, and then that just comes out. So, as you can see, there's the axle with the bearing on it. Now the next step is to get this bearing off the axle. Um, depending on you know, how well they've made it, it will either come off smoothly, nicely, with a little bit of tension, or it'll be an absolute bastard. You've got to whack it again and again and again from this side and this side, hit it loads and loads of times with a hammer and so on, annoying your neighbors. I think this one was all right. Yeah, there we go. It's slowly coming off. A bit of grease on there definitely helps as well. Okay, so that's the old knackered bearing. That feels really gritty. You probably can't hear that, but it's, it's kind of going dip, 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 all the way around. The next step is to get this one out. Now, we've got a lot of room to play with now. So the general system would be, now we've got a nice gap here, put it flat on a surface, and a surface that's not going to scratch up the end of the hub. So put a bit of plastic down or, or a load of newspaper or, you know, just something to stop that getting scratched up, especially if you're dealing with a nice expensive hub. Then we're going to put some sort of rod through here to sit up against the inner race of the bearing. And then we're just going to hit down onto the end of the rod, moving around little bit by little bit, and then slowly tapping out the bearing itself. Now this bit, you've got to be really, really careful because you don't want what you're hitting through to scratch up the inside of the hub. Um, it's not the end of the world if it, it scratches you know, around this point on the inside. But if you start damaging the bearing seat itself, that means that the new bearing you press in is not gonna sit straight, it's gonna have a lot of play in it. It's just not good. All right, so here's the hub with both of the bearings out. To press the new bearings back in, you've got to have a look at the axle first. Um, there's two types of axle with these uh, cartridge bearings. The first type is a totally smooth axle, which is the easiest to deal with. If the axle is completely smooth and doesn't have any shoulders on it, you can just press the bearing in on each side in any order you like, and then just slide the axle through, tap it through once you've lubed it up. If the axle has a shoulder on it, like this one, you need to have a little bit of a think about how you're going to do it first, um, because you can't hit both bearings in first and then try and get this through because obviously it won't go through the bearings. These shoulders sit inside the hub like this and a bearing goes on either side. So what you need to do is you need to think about it logically. The best way to do this is to press in the side which has the long part of the axle sticking out of it. Now in this case, this will be the free body here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna press in the bearing this side first, then slide the axle through from this side and then press in the second bearing here. The reason we do this is that pressing in the second bearing requires the axle to be in position and getting the bearing on this end where there's nothing sticking out the other side is a lot easier in terms of pressing it in than sliding the bearing on from this side and pressing it all the way down onto here. I would go so far to say as it's impossible to do it this way. So what we do then, we press the bearing in this side first slide the axle through and then finish off by pressing in the bearing on this side. To press this bearing in then, we will use the bearing press. Now, this is a bearing press. This is a wheels manufacturing bearing press, which I've had for a couple of years now, and I really like. It's very, very simple. As you can see, it's just a threaded rod with two handles that spin around and then move the system in. Then you've got these things called bearing drifts. Now, what you do is you buy a variety of different ones to match the size of bearing that you're using. Now, if you can see, that fits that bearing fits on that bearing drift perfectly. So you have the hub or whatever in the middle with the correct bearing drifts, and you just gently screw it together and it presses the bearings in very smoothly and very evenly. 
and gets them exactly right. You can see here I've got a few different sizes of bearing drift. This one's for a bottom bracket. Um, this one's for a slightly larger drive side bearing in a hub. Um, but they all work in the same way. So that's the most elegant way to do it and it's the safest way to do it. Now this bearing is a 6802 bearing, which I don't actually have a bearing drift for. So a simple way to press it in without a bearing drift is to use the old bearing you're taking out as the bearing drift because it's the same size. So what you'll do is you'll drop this into place, press it in a little bit with your fingers just to get it into position. We'll get the bearing press ready with a small bearing drift on it, small enough so that it gets around the ratchet mechanism here, but this isn't actually the right size for this bearing. So we'll put one of the old bearings on here, slide it into position, and then that's our bearing drift system. From here, we'll get a larger bearing drift on this side, which is this one. Put the handle on the other side of the bearing press, and then slowly screw it together until the bearing on this side is pressed all the way in. Then we take the bearing press off, and as we can see, the bearing is now sat in place. Next, we get the axle and push it through from this side. There we go, in position. Now that leaves just a very small amount of axle sticking out here to press this bearing in with. Now at this point, the axle's in place, which has reduced the inside diameter of the um, system quite a lot. Um, there's a chance that your bearing press won't actually go all the way through like this one doesn't. Okay, so how can we press the bearing in? Well, we can improvise. Everybody who has a modern bike with quick release levers therefore has access to a sort of makeshift bearing press system. Um, you can use the quick release lever as a bearing press system and with the quick release rod being a very small diameter, um, you can go through the smallest of axles. So giving you the ability to press in even really small bearings. Here is an old Mavic skewer that I've put a load of 5 yen coins on. Now a Japanese 5 yen coin is like a little washer with a hole in it. How convenient. Um, if you don't live in Japan or somewhere that has holes in coins, um, you can just use washers. Um, get a load of washers from somewhere. I'm sure you can find some. And then what you're going to do is just put the quick release lever through and tighten it up. Then pull the lever down, which will press in the system. Uh, like this. Now it should be noted that the coin here is actually a smaller diameter than the bearing, which means that it will be pushing only on the inside race of the bearing, um, which is not ideal. So therefore, I'm going to use this slightly larger bearing drift to add support to the bearing as we push it together. Now you will have to have a little play around with how many washers or coins you need. Um, this is about how many I need. There we go. So we just screw on this end here. You can feel it move a little bit there. It's a bit of a juggling act this. There we go, I can feel it going in. Move it in a bit more. Screw it around. It gets a bit tighter as you go. Move it in a bit more. So that's starting to move in. You'll keep doing this until the bearings press right into place. Now, if for some reason the bearing slips out on this side and you need to pull it back through the other way, you can again improvise with this system by, you know, using bits of tubing, hollow tubes that you can find laying around, building out bracing systems um, just to sort of pull it whichever way it needs to go in. Um, it's quite fun finding little ways to do this. Um, I've been quite impressed with how inventive I can be to get the bearings pressed in. But that's how you do it when the, when the bearings are really small and you've got to get the axle inside the bearings as you press them in. As I say, um, pressing in a system with a hollow smooth axle that just slides through after you press the bearings in is a damn sight easier, um, but not as fun. Um, so there you go. So there we have it. The axle and bearings are now pressed in properly, um, done with a combination of a professional bought bearing press and a homemade skewer, five yen coin, bit of cut off carbon tubing, old bit of profile racing crank remover tool that I sort of bodged together. Um, it works. Again, this is a cheap Taiwanese hub, so you can, you can see how sort of nasty it is to go with because these bearing seats are really, really tight. But that's in place now. 
and it's just a case of uh, putting it back together. In terms of the free body unit, you'll do exactly the same thing. Um, to get the bearings out, you'll take off this part, get it, get open the bearings up as much as possible, then tap them through. So you would tap this one through first, move the washer inside, then tap out this inner one all the way through to press them in. Again, you press it in from this side using either a bearing press or something you've made to yourself um, after checking the bearing seats, and that's it. If the free body unit uses a open system on this side and an open system on this side, again, much easier. You just tap it out that way, press it in, tap it out that way, press it in, again, using you know a bearing press if you can or your own little system you've made. And that's how you get bearings back in.